So today we are going to look at lesson 1-5, solving inequalities, and I am going to skip all the way down to the bottom of this page and concentrate on reviewing, um, converting words into an inequality. So there are words here that mean inequality. So I'm going to highlight those words and you should as well. So the words at most, that's not a very good highlighter color. Let's try maybe red. So yeah, so at most and then is not equal to, not really a inequality, but it's something that you'll see because it'll mean that the sides, the left and right side of the equal sign are not equal. So I guess technically it's inequality, but not one that you think of. And then is greater than and then is less than. Now, a lot of students get is less than confused with subtraction because we will use the words, um, Joey's age is 10 years less than Johnny's. This is a different less than than that one. So here's what we're gonna do. Let me write above here. Um, so at most, think of this in terms of putting um, let's, let's say that the number that you're looking at, in this case 25 for number 7, um, and x is your allowance. So I'm going to look at all of these as if it's your allowance. So if your allowance is at most 25, I want you to think of putting that 25 at the ceiling or at the floor. And if you put it at the ceiling, it means you can't go above that, so you would be only less than. And if you put it at the floor, you would only be... Uh, you can't go below the floor, you can only go up. So there's no second floor, there's no um, basement. And before we even do this, let's talk about our symbols. So our symbols here, this symbol here, and we read our symbols from left to right. So from the left side, I'm reaching the smaller side or the pointier side of this, whereas this is the wide, big, op open side. So if I read this um, inequality from the left side, I reach that small, pointy side first, this is less than. And then if I flip it around this way, now as I read it from left to right, I reach the big open part. So because I reach the big open part, this is greater than. My little kindergarten handwriting, sorry. If you only knew. Down if it's better. Nope, I don't think that's going to work. All right, and then if I added on to this, each of these, um, in a little line underneath there, that would be or equals to, greater than or equals to. Okay? All right, so at most, the most you're going to get for your allowance is 25. So wouldn't you put that at the ceiling, which means you're just going to go below that. So that would be a less than sign. And the question is, is at most, if you're gonna get at most $25 for your allowance, could that equal $25? And the answer is yes, so that's gonna be or equals to. And so we've got X is less than or equal to 25. Okay, let's look at number eight. X is not equal to 25, so that means that your allowance is not gonna equal 25. So this isn't a floor or ceiling question. Your not equal to sign is going to look like this. So x is not equal to, well, let me, I like to have that as a diagonal slash. It didn't come out that way, so it should look like that, is not equal to 25. All right, then let's look at number 9, is greater than 25. So your allowance is going to be greater than 25. So does that mean that that's the most you're going to get or the least you're going to get? So 25 is going to be the smallest amount you would get, so you're going to put that at the floor because that's the lowest amount, and you can only go up from there. So we are going to be looking at a greater than symbol. But the question is, is greater than, does it include 25? Is 25 greater than 25? No. So you're not going to have an equals to sign. So it's going to look like x is greater than 25, no equals to sign. And then the last one, your um, allowance is going to be less than 25. So does that mean that that's the smallest amount or the biggest amount? So in other words, less than 25, that means that you're not going to get any more than 25. So that goes up at the ceiling, which means you can only go down from there. 
So let me get a bit of color. So that means that you're going to go less than, the question is, does that include 25? Is 25 less than 25? No, so there will be no equals to. So x is less than 25. So there's a little review from algebra one, two. All right, so let's look at problem one. And it says, what inequality represents the sentence, the quotient of a number and three is no more than 15? So the quotient, that's an important part. So the quotient, let's go ahead and underline things. The quotient means that it's a division problem. So that means we have to divide two different things. Typically, the word and is going to separate those two things. So I'm going to divide a number. Whoops, let me get a different color than that. So I'm going to divide a number along with three. I'm going to put that there, but notice that I've just gotten to some inequality verbiage is no more than. So I'm going to highlight that is no more than because remember we have to figure out where is our equal sign and in this case an inequality sign and then 15. So is no more than 15. So if your allowance is going to be no more than 15 would your 15 go at the ceiling or at the floor? In other words, is, is 15 the most you're going to get or is 15 the smallest amount you're going to get? So if you're going to get no more than 15, then 15 is the top value that you're going to get. So we're going to put that at the ceiling. So shouldn't we, we be looking at a less than, whoops, that was supposed to be a different color, less than, and then could it include 15? And it says no more than 15, so yes, it could include 15. So let's see, I don't always like what they do here. So we're gonna write our inequality down here because sometimes their little helpfulness is a little bit more confusing. So I know that we have the quotient. So the quotient means that we're gonna have a division here. And then of a number, if you don't know what it is, you're gonna let it be x, so of a number is x, and three, so the three is gonna go down here. Then our inequality is no more than, is going to go here, less than or equal to, and then finally, 15 is gonna go on the other side. So 15 is gonna go over here. So that is your inequality. They didn't ask you to solve it, you're just translating from words into your algebraic inequality. All right, so then let's look at problem two. Let me move this up here. And for problem two, it says, what is the solution of negative two times x plus nine plus five is greater than or equal to three? So now we're actually solving that inequality. And then we're gonna graph it. So I want you to cross out. We're not gonna do any of this right here. It's confusing. So we're gonna use this space here to solve our inequality, but first, I want you to write over here the one thing that's different when you solve an inequality versus an equality statement, meaning with an equal sign, is one thing and one thing only. The only thing that changes here when you're solving this e equation is sometimes you have to flip this inequality sign, if you recall from algebra one, two. So we flip that inequality sign anytime we multiply both sides or divide both sides by a negative value. So write that up here. So here's your difference. We are going to flip, and that means just reverse it. It's really a technical term, right? Flip the inequality sign if you multiply, oh, that's a U, if you multiply or divide both sides, that really means across the inequality sign, 
both sides by a negative value. So that's important. Everything else remains the same. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this as normal. I'm going to put a line straight down from the inequality sign so I separate the two sides. We're going to follow those same four steps. Distribute if you need to. Collect like terms on each side first. Clean things up. Then move your variables to one side or the other. And then finally, multiply or divide to solve or you know, do your inverse operations. So here we need to multiply that negative two through. So if I do that, I get negative two x, and then negative two times nine is a negative 18, plus the five is greater than or equal to three. So then on this left side here, I have some like terms. These two are like terms. So I want to combine the negative 18 and the 5. So I have a negative 2x that didn't change. A negative 18 and a positive 5 is a negative 13. And so nowhere so far have I multiplied or divided across the inequality, meaning to both sides, by a negative. Multiplying or distributing a negative 2 here doesn't count because I didn't do it to both sides. So now the star of the show is our negative 2x. So I want to add 13 to both sides. And so I get a negative 2x is greater than or equal to 3 plus 13 is 16. And now finally, beep, 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 beep. Warning bell should be going off in your head. I now am multiplying both sides here, or I'm sorry, I'm dividing both sides here by a negative value that causes me to have to flip that inequality sign. So I'm going to continue my work over here because I ran out of room. You may not have. And so the negative twos cancel and I'm left with an X. I am going to flip that inequality sign from a greater than or equals to to a less than or equal to. And then 16 divided by negative 2 is negative 8. So this is our answer. And then we need to graph the solution. So this is called our boundary point, negative 8. It's where our whole solution um, revolves around. And so I want to find negative 8 on my number line. And so here's a couple of reminders. Um, that are that you have to recall. So if I have a greater than symbol or a less than symbol with no equals to, this is going to be an open circle. I'm going to abbreviate circle, so open circle. If I have a greater than or equal to sign or a less than or equal to sign, I will have a closed circle because that means that we're including that boundary point in our solution. So that's a closed circle. So for this one, for at our negative eight, so here's negative eight on our number line, that's our boundary point. Because we have a, an equals two line underneath this inequality sign, we are gonna close that circle. If that equals two wasn't there, we would have in open circle. So there's my circle and I'm going to close it by filling it in. Okay. And then if you have your variable on the left side, this is going to look like an arrow pointing the direction your graph needs to go. So we need all x values that are less than or equal to negative eight. Well, less than is in this direction. And doesn't this look like an arrow pointing to the left? If your variable's on the right side, you won't see it this way. So do make sure that you have your variable on the left I normally don't care what side you have your variable on, but for inequalities, it's important. And also note that I am plotting my line and my circle above this number line, because if you do it on the number line, oftentimes it's very difficult for me to tell whether you have an open or a closed circle. So we are going to do number three, but I don't like the way they 
and do all this stuff. So I'm going to show you the four step plan. And so give yourself some room here. I'm going to do it right here. And so the four step plan for any word problem, you're going to do always these four steps. So the upper left box is your let statement. This is where you're going to define your variables here. This box right here is going to be where you write your equation to solve. Then you will solve it down here into this third box and you're going to come up with a solution. Just because you solve for your unknown doesn't mean you answer the question. So then over here, this is your therefore statement and that's where I like to use that triangle of dots, dot, 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 means therefore, you're going to answer the question. So let's go through our problem and highlight things that are important. So, and underline things that are important. So we have a digital music service offers two subscription plans. So they have the first plan and the second plan. And then the question is, how many songs must you download for the second plan to cost less than the first plan? So we have to kind of look at both plans and figure out which one is a better deal. One is a better deal if you download a certain amount and the other one is a better deal if you download a certain amount. So if you don't download much, you might go with one plan and if you download a lot, you'll go with a different plan. So let's look at our plans. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, all right, so the first plan right here has a $9 membership fee and charges a dollar per download. Would we need to know the download in order to determine um, how much money we spent? So the first has a $9 membership fee and charges a dollar per download. And then the second, has a $25 membership, so that's quite a bit difference um, right there. Fee and charges 50 cents per download. So the download cost is half as much, but the membership fee is quite a bit more. So again, I need to know the number of downloads in order to solve the problem. So I'm gonna let X equal my number of downloads. Then over on the right side, which hopefully I won't run out of room. Let's see if I can move things over. I'm going to move things over a little bit. So on the right side, I'm going to write my two different equations. And it says how many songs must you download for the second plan to cost less than the first plan. So we're going to do the second plan first and then cost less than. So you're less than this right here is going to be just a less than symbol, not equal to, just less than. So we're going to do the second less than the first. So let's figure out the cost of our second plan. So our second plan I have underlined in green, and it says it has a $25 membership. So here's $25, that's a cost, plus then it's going to be 50 cents, so 0.50 per download. Doesn't that mean I multiply it to the number of downloads? Well, my number of downloads is X because I don't know what it is. And then we said that the second plan has to be less than the first plan. So the first plan I have underlined in pink. And so the first plan costs you $9 plus $1 per every download. So isn't that one times X? And so now we have an algebraic equation that we just need to solve. So our stars of the show are our X's, so I want to solve or get those on one side first. So my smaller X is 0 0.5, so I've got 0 0.5, and I'm going to subtract 0 0.5, which is a half X. There should be a zero there, it's okay. The kids are coming back from lunch, or going to lunch, sorry, they're really loud, I apologize. So then I have a 25, and I have less than, and then I have my 9, and then 1 minus a half is a half. So I'm going to have plus 0.50x, right? So the star of my show 
is my x term. So I need to get rid of a positive 9. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. And one of the things you want to look for is a reasonable answer. And number one, our answer should be positive because you can't have negative downloads. And then number two, um, we probably shouldn't have a decimal because you, you're not going to have a partial download. So 25 minus 9 is 16. And then less than 0.50x. So to undo x, we are going to divide by 0 0.5, which essentially you're dividing by a half, and if you divide by a half, you're really multiplying by two. But you can do that on the calculator if you don't believe my math. So 16 divided by a half is 32 less than x. You don't ever want to read an inequality backwards, meaning we have our x on the wrong side. I need to switch the x and the 32. If I flip-flop the left and right side, I have to flip that inequality sign as well. So this inequality sign, whoops, this inequality sign is going to get flipped, and instead of a less than, it's going to become a greater than. And I'm going to switch the x and the 32. So what that means is the second, the second plan will be less than the first plan as long as you download more than, greater than, greater than 32. I touched the wrong thing, so sorry, it kind of messed up a little bit. So if I download more than 32 um, songs, the second plan is actually going to be better. If you don't believe me, plug in some values. Um, if I download 33, plug in 33 into here and 33 into here, you're going to get a lesser value here than you will here. But if I download only 30, plug in 30 to here and 30 to here, you're going to get a bigger value here than you do here. So the answer to our question is therefore dot dot dot. Um, the second plan that says plan will be cheaper or however you want to say it if you download more than 32 songs. Now if you download exactly 32 songs, then both plans are gonna be equal. So it has to go more than 32 songs, which means 33 or more. Okay, let's look at the next problem. All right, so we are also, um, So for this one, you're going to want to cross out all of this because we already did the word problem associated with it, and we don't need any of that. So now let's look at problem four. So problem four is going to look at no solution and all real numbers, and we're going to look again like we did yesterday at always, sometimes, or never. So remember, if you get all real numbers as a solution, it's going to be always. If you get no solution as a solution, it'll be never true. And then sometimes as if you get, well, yesterday it was if you had like x equals 2. So today we're going to have to talk about this because maybe these have changed. So let's go ahead and solve this. So you might want to pause the video and try solving this on your own and then restart the video and see how you did. Okay, so I'm going to solve this. Again, I'm going to solve it algebraically just as is. The only difference is if I multiply or divide by a negative, I have to flip that inequality. So the 4 gets distributed, which gives me 4 times 2x is 8x. And 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. The less than sign doesn't change. And then I'm going to distribute the 8. 8 times x is 8x. 8 times 1 is 8. I need to gather my x's on the same side, so I am going to subtract 8x 
and subtract 8x. And lo and behold, my x terms completely cancel out. And you need to write what you're left with. So I have negative 12 less than 8. I never had to flip my inequality because I never once multiplied or divided by a negative. So now you want to look at this statement <clears throat> and you want to determine is this a true or false statement? Is negative 12 less than 8? The answer to that is it's true. Negative 12 is less than 8. So what that means is no matter what value you plug in for x, this will always hold true. So that means that the inequality is always true. So the solution set of the inequality would be all real numbers. Any numbers you can think of, okay? All right, so then let's go to problem five. So for problem five, you're going to solve an and inequality. <clears throat> And that means that your solution here and your solution here must intersect each other. You must be able to be here and here at the same time. So we are gonna solve each inequality individually. So I'm gonna go ahead and start from here. I'm gonna take this first one and I wanna get the three X by itself. So we're gonna add one and add one. Basically we're doing two problems in one. So those cancel. 8 plus 1 is 9. We don't flip the inequality. It stays the same. And then we get a 3x. I want to undo 3x by dividing by 3. I am not dividing by a negative, so I do not flip the inequality. And I get 3 is less than or equal to x. Anytime you have an inequality, you do not want that x on the right. So we have to flip-flop the 3 and the x, which means I'm going to flip-flop that inequality sign. So we get x, instead of less than, we have greater than or equal <clears throat> to 3. And I'm losing my voice. So that's half of the solution. If we graph that, because we have an equals to underneath that inequality sign, we are going to fill in our circle. So our boundary point is 3. So I'm going to have a closed circle above 3. And then because we have our x on the left, this is an arrow pointing to the right. In other words, all values greater than or equal to 3. Well, greater than 3 is in this direction, and isn't that an arrow pointing to the right? So that's the solution to half of it. We're going to combine our solutions at the end. We're just doing two pieces at once. Then for the second one, here's the second one, we just simply have to divide by 2 to get to our solution. So for this one, I'm gonna rewrite my solution over here. We have x, we didn't flip the inequality because I did not divide by a negative, so x is less than six. So because my inequality sign does not have an equals two bar like that one did, we will have an open circle at six. So here's my boundary point, open circle at six. And then what, I want all values less than six. That's an arrow pointing to the left, and lo and behold, all values are to the left. Now we want to put these graphs together. So we have two different boundary points. One boundary point at three, so here's our closed circle at three, and one boundary point at six, here's our open circle at six. We only want what overlaps. And if I take this graph and put it over here, you're going to see what overlaps. Watch what happens. If I had a closed circle here and an arrow to the right, wouldn't my graphs overlap here to here? I only want this part of the graph because that's the only part they have in common. I can't be over here and over here at the same time, but I can be in between the two boundary points at the same time. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna combine or put a line in between the two. And this right here is the solution graphically to this inequality. Now, how do we write this inequality? If um, you can either write x is less, or I'm sorry, x is greater than or equal to three and x is less than six. You can write that out, just put the word and in there. Or we can sandwich this together. Look at your boundary points. My left boundary point is three, 
and my right is 6. So just write a 3 here and a 6 here, and you're going to put your x in the middle. Now your inequality signs are going to look a little different than up here because notice how I now have the 3 here and the x here. Go back to up here. Notice how when I had the 3 on the left and the x on the right, we had a less than or equal to sign. So that's what we're going to have here, a less than or equal to sign. Because if you read it backwards, read it backwards, is an x greater than, if I read it backwards, or equal to 3? And that's what we want. And then here, the x and the 6 are in the same order, x and 6. So I keep that inequality sign down here. So it's less than. So that's what it looks like sandwiched together. All right, so then let's do our last problem, problem six. And this time we're going to solve an or statement. It's this or this. You cannot be in both places at once if you have an or situation. I can either be here or here, but you can't be in both places at once. So you should not see your graphs of, of this inequality intersecting. All right, so let's go ahead and do what we did before. I'm going to cross out this, and we're going to solve our inequalities separately. So I'm going to solve them down here below. So I'm going to take 7w plus 3 is greater than 11. And I'm going to put my or here, and we'll do the other one in a minute. So I'm going to put my line straight down here. My star of the show is 7w. So I'm going to subtract 3 and subtract 3. The inequality sign does not flip. And so I have 7w is greater than 8. And then dividing by 7, dividing by 7, you either can write your answer as 8 sevenths, or I like to look at it as a mixed number because it makes more sense on the number line. 8 sevenths converts to 1 and 1 over 7, so 1 and 1 seventh. Or, got to bring that or down, it's part of your answer. Now we're going to do the other inequality. I'm going to move this over a little bit to the right. I have a little bit more room. And so now I'm going to solve 4w minus 1 is less than negative 13. Okay, and I am going to circle my 4w because I want it by itself, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Here's the division of my sides. The 1's cancel, and I get 4w is less than negative 12, and then I'm going to divide by 4. Again, I have not divided by a negative, so I don't flip the inequality. And I get W is less than negative 3. So this would be our solution algebraically. That's what that would look like. And then we're going to graph this. So I have two boundary points, one at 1 and 1 seventh and one at negative 3. So let's start with the 1 and 1 seventh. So 1 and 1 seventh is going to be here and a smidge. Because there's no equals to, we're going to have an open circle. So right here, and I want you to mark that as 1 and 1 seventh because it's not marked. So then we're going to have an open circle. That way your reader can tell what that um, open circle represents. And isn't this an arrow pointing to the right? I want all values greater than. So we're going to have an arrow going all the way to the right. Then our second boundary point is going to be at negative 3. Again, we don't have an equals 2, so we're going to have an open circle at negative 3. And you can see that your arrow is pointing to the left. So we're going to go into the left. And notice that, I'm going to move this over so I can get my arrow drawn in. And notice that our graphs do not overlap. And you can see that I cannot be here and here at the same time, but I could be here or here. So any x value to the left of negative 3 and any x value to the right of 1 and 1 seventh will always make this true. Anything in between will not. So sometimes this is true, sometimes it's not. It depends on what x values you have. 
All right, last thing is this lesson check. And I just want you to take the time to do 31, 32, 33, and then number 34. So pause the video, see if you can answer those, and then I'll put the answers up here. Okay, so hopefully you've done this on your own, and then um, the answers that you need would be here. So this is a true statement, five is greater than four. This is a false statement because you get negative five is not greater than positive four because negatives are always smaller. And then 33 is true because when you divide by that negative one, you get a negative five. You wanna flip flop. Well, okay, let's just look at it this way. If you don't flip flop, isn't negative five less than four? We're not gonna flip flop because I'm just proving to you that this is, their operation is true. We didn't actually solve to get to that. So if you flip flop the inequality and said, no, it's false, you didn't actually, you didn't physically divide by negative one to both sides to solve an equation. So that's kind of a weird one, but that's why. And then for 34, however you explained it, basically you're flipping the inequality. So for 34, you should have said something to the fact that you flipped the inequality sign. All right, that's it. Good luck. Let me know if you have questions.